Be'ez HaShem is we begin, Perek Shein, the second chapter in the Ramaz Hilchas Mid, Lords of Circumcision, the Book of Hava, the Sefer of Love, which in this Perek we discuss regarding the actual Mila itself. As Rami Gitalo Chalaf, regarding the, the Mayil and the, the tools that the, that the Mayil uses. So HaKol Kshein Lomel, everyone is valid to do the circumcision. Rafael Aurel, even someone himself is uncircumcised, which must be talking about someone that uh, his brother has died because of Mila, and he yeah, doesn't have the strength yet because or else definitely he would be someone who doesn't keep the Jewish faith if he's not getting circumcision. But even if he's uncircumcised, but ever were a slave, but Israel, a woman, but cotton in the minor, even though he doesn't have intelligence, he doesn't even know how to focus for the purpose of the mitzvah, Malan, they could do the circumcision. But Malkam Shein Shamish, if there's no uh, man who could do it. Abogoy, but a Gentile, loyal Maklal, is not do the circumcision at all. Now, the Imal, but if he did the circumcision in the Sarlaz of Loma Shnea, then the person does not have to do a circumcision a second time. Now, over Kolmon, you could do the circumcision with anything. Even with a, a, a sharp stone, or a piece of glass, anything that cuts. One should not do the circumcision with a, 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 a sharp uh, wooden reed. Because of the danger, because the splinters could, could shoot forth from it when you press it, and it could be dangerous. Now, however, it's an ideal mitzvah to do the circumcision with a piece of metal, whether it's a, 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 a knife, whether with scissors, but all the Jewish people, the custom is to use a knife, a metal knife. Halacha is regarding the actual um, process of the circumcision. So, how do we do circumcision? So, so you cut off the entire skin, that covers the crown of the male organ, uh, which is called the foreskin, until it reveals the entire crown. That's called the milah. Then the second stage is, which called the priya, then you pull away the soft, uh, uh, the, uh, soft membrane, which is beneath the foreskin, with the fingernail, and you pull it back uh, either side, until you see the actual flesh of the crown of the male organ. And then the third step is, which is called the metzitza, then they, they suck out, by the circumcision, until you take out, you extract the blood from distant, pla- distant places which come over there, they should not come to be danger because through the wound, the, the blood in the flesh of the organ um, gets heated up and congeals and it could cause a swelling of the, of the organ, so you suck out that blood. Whoever does not suck out the blood, they remove him from doing brismilas. After these, that they suck out the blood, they put on it a, a, a bandage or a compress, which is there to heal uh, the, the wound, and similar types of things, and that is the, the process of the bris mila. Halacha Gimel regarding perfecting the mila. Yes, tzitzin, there are strands of the foreskin which remain connected to the crown that are ma'akfin as mila, that hold back the validity of the mila. Then there are certain strands that are not critical for the, for the validity of the mila. Kate said also, if it remains from the, from the foreskin, the, the, the skin that covers the majority of the height of the, of the crown, so it's considered uncircumcised like he was before. And that foreskin is considered the strands that are critical, hold back the validity. But if it only remains just a little bit, that does not cover the, the, the majority of the height of the crown, that's strands which are not critical, and one does not have to uh, circumcise a second time. Hamal, someone who circumcises, as long as he's still engaged in the circumcision, meaning he did not remove his hand yet from the circumcision, he, he goes back, to, to, to perfect it, whether for the strands that are critical, whether those that are not critical, but Parah should already separated, already stopped, then then for those that are ma'akib, that are critical, Chazer goes back for, those that are not ma'akib, and Chazer does not have to go back for. Now, Molov, let's say he did the circumcision, meaning he cut off the foreskin, but Parah did not pull back the membrane that's beneath it, it's as if he did not do a circumcision. Aloha, hey, cotton, a baby that his skin is very soft, and it's hanging. Or, or he was very fleshy. In either one of these cases, it looks like as if he's not circumcised because it's like hanging something. It looks like as if there's a foreskin. So, so we see this baby at a time when he has an erection, which is significant because then the, the flesh stretches out. 
If you see him in that state and he looks like he's circumcised because then everything gets taut and pulled back, then in you don't have to do anything with the baby. Now, but you have to fix up the flesh on either sides because of the appearance to the eye that people should not suspect him that he's uncircumcised. Now, but let's say even during an erection, then the baby does not look like as if he's circumcised. Then you have to go back and cut off the flesh that's hanging on either side. That as long as you'll be able to then see the crown revealed at a time of when it's hard. But is meant to be safe from, and this halacha is from rabbinic law. I'm not sure, but really from biblical law. Even though he seems like he's uncircumcised, since they did the circumcision, in the you don't have to do a circumcision a second time. Halacha vav regarding doing circumcision on Shabbos and Yom Tov. You do all types of circumcision on Shabbos. The mullen, the circumcision, the pulling back of the membrane, and the sucking out of the blood, all three parts. And the chesat system akhman, even go back, if you finished already, to go back for those uh, strands that are critical, even though you already had separated from doing the mila. Now, but regarding the strands that are not critical, there you would only go back for it as long as you did not uh, pull back and, and, and separate from doing the mila. And the nice and less espalonis, you put on the bandage. Now, a machshir mila, but regarding preparatory acts of the circumcision, in the dechen of Shabbos, that will not push away the prohibitions of Shabbos. Okay, so haso harish lematsu sakin. If let's say they didn't find a knife in the sakin of Shabbos, you're not allowed to make the knife on Shabbos, which would require malachas to be violated. But let me be nice and makom makom. Neither could you carry it to bring it from place to place. But for the malvishin ma'ugav, even the alleyway that the one does not have an eru, which is only from rabbinic law prohibiting to carry from the quarter to the malvay if there's no air between them. And I'll bring it from one quarter to another quarter. And the Ein Eiriv Medivrein Nitra, what that tells us is that even the rabbinic law of Eiriv does not get pushed away. Nehavos Hasakan of bringing the knife for the Bismila. Since you could have brought it from before Shabbos, even the rabbinic prohibition is not going to be pushed away for the preparatory acts of the circumcision. We're not allowed to grind the herbs, which is used for the bandage. You cannot heat up the water, which is to bathe the child before the circumcision. You cannot make the bandage, because all these could have been prepared from before Shabbos. Mix together the wine and the oil, which was used also as some type of put on to the, the area. Now, let's say the cumin was not grinded from before Shabbos, so what you could do is you could chew it with the teeth, which is, will grind it that way, and then you can put it on because whatever you could deviate a malacha on Shabbos, how it's usually done, then you deviate. And so to him, like, if you did not mix the wine and the oil, so nations and lots of them, lots of you put on each one separately. Zakal, this is the rule. Whatever you could do from before Shabbos, in the day of Shabbos, will not push away the prohibitions of Shabbos. I'm shachach, but if someone forgot, did not prepare these preparatory acts. Okay, then it's too late, you can't do it, because the Shabbos cannot be overridden for that, and it gets pushed off for the ninth day for Sunday. So they circumcised the child, the baby on Shabbos. But what happens about And then the warm water, which uh, was to bathe the baby, uh, the area of the bris milah, the, the water spilled out. Or the herbs that you need to use, the, the, the medication to put on the, on the milah, got dispersed. Now you don't have it. So, all these things you could do and you'll make it on Shabbos. And even though it requires malachas, because now it's dangerous to the baby once the circumcision was done. A place where the, the, their norm is to they bathe the baby, to strengthen the baby. You bathe the baby on Shabbos on the day of the circumcision. Whether before the circumcision or after the circumcision. Even on the third day after post the circumcision, Shechalis B'Shabbos falls out on Shabbos, where then actually the, the, the child's as, at his weakest in the, in, in the dangerous situation. So, and that's Ben Rechitz's Kalgufa, whether bathing the whole body, Ben Rechitz's Mila, whether if you're only washing the area of the circumcision. And Ben Mechamet Shulchem of Arab Shabbos, whether it's hot water that was heated from only Arab Shabbos, Ben Mechamet Shulchem of Shabbos, or even hot water that was heated on Shabbos. Which that's specifically going on the case of bathing the area of the mila on the third day, because that's dangerous, so therefore uh, will violate these halachas for that. Halacha test, shalchu beleviu sakam erev Shabbos. Let's say they forgot, and they didn't bring the knife from before Shabbos, and everyone's waiting to do the mila on Shabbos. So, you could tell a Gentile, lahavi sakin b'Shabbos, to bring the knife on Shabbos through an alleyway that there's no Erev, because that Isser is only rabbinic, and for the purpose of mila, it's permitted. As long as you don't bring it through a public domain, which would be a malacha deraisa. 
which calls the double the rule of, is as follows. Anything that doing it on Shabbos would be forbidden on us only as a Shavuos, which is a rabbinic prohibition, which is carrying without an air, let's say, which is only rabbinically prohibited. You're permitted to tell a Gentile to do it. The Allah says mitzvah is man to do a mitzvah in its designated time, which is what's called a Shavuos to Shavuos. Telling the Gentile is rabbinic prohibition, do himself rabbinic prohibition. The Maka mitzvah, as we have over here in the Bris Mila, that's permitted. Now, but anything that's forbidden for us to do because of a biblical prohibition, the us alone, the the Allah says, it's forbidden to tell a Gentile to do it on Shabbos, it's the Isra of a Mila Akim, which would not be permitted even for the Bris Mila. Regarding the preparatory acts of the circumcision, even in this designated time, on day 8, also does not override Malacha on Yamtiv. Because since you could have done it from before Yamtiv. So therefore, there's a Kavachem over here. If the preparatory acts of the circumcision do not override a shvus, which is only from rabbinic law, how could it, violate, how could it override a negative prohibition in the Torah? So therefore you cannot do malacha on Yom Tev, but we say even on Shabbos you can't do Isidur Abbanon. But you could grind the herbs on Yom Tev. Why? Since it's fit to use for cooking in a pot, which Eichel Nefesh is permitted to be done, so therefore, although you're doing it for bris mila, once it's permitted for eichel nefesh, it's permitted also for this for the mitzah mila. And so to the turban yam you're allowed to mix the wine and the oil, because even though on Shabbos um, it's only uh, it's only would be forbidden rabbinic law because it's gzeir shchikis among the not like grind uh, you might come to grind herbs and yam is permitted because of the tzrachim of the mila.